All right. So once again, guys, no. Uh, good day. Good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session, guys. Welcome. So uh, in today's session, no. So we're going to study, okay, the module four, no, which is the time response analysis. So actually, this is the second part, which is the step step response of second order systems. Okay. So, la in the last session, no, we have covered the ano no. Uh, actually, we have started no the uh, analysis no transient analysis of uh second order systems. So, uh, na pag-aralan natin yung kanyang general transfer function as well as its uh format no. Yan na pa na pag-aralan din natin yung some terminologies no like uh ano ba ibig sabihin ng zeta, d omega n, omega d, sigma d and the likes. Okay? So in today's uh, lecture, okay, we're going to focus naman on the step response no of the second order system. Okay? So what uh what is the output no pa nag-input tayo ng uh step signal, uh particularly no the unit step signal. Okay. So first no uh, let's have a short review no uh, what is the first order step response so if you can still remember no during the uh, lecture uh, with regards to the time response analysis yung introduction we learned that ano no from all the test signals available ang pinaka most appropriate to use no in order for us to study the behavior of uh, i mean the time response behavior of systems is the step signal or particularly the unit step signal okay because number 1 no so it is a bounded input so definitely no if the system is stable it will produce a bounded output okay uh, moreover uh ano kasi siya no dc kumbaga zero frequency so that's why the other bounded signal which is the sinusoidal signal is the one that we are that we will be using no on the frequency response analysis okay so uh, we have derived no in class okay what is the first order step response so as a review let us write no so ano ba ang first order step response so we have and guys c of t okay so we use the c of t no okay for the uh output no of a control system so c of t is equal to quantity 1 minus e raised to negative t all over t okay u of t so this is our ano no step response guys. No so particularly if the input is a unit step signal. Now kung hindi siya unit step signal no so kung nare-recall nyo guys, magkakaroon lang po ito guys ng amplitude na A by linearity. Okay? Di ba pag linearity no so scaled input is equal to scaled output. So pag uh, yung input natin ay may amplitude A, so you just need to put an amplitude A there. No, but typically the A is equal to 1 because ang madalas na input natin is a unit step signal. Now guys, for the second order step response, due to the interest of time, we will not derive it anymore. Yan, medyo mahaba kasi yung derivation niya, guys. If you're interested, you can look it up, no? Kung paano siya na-derive. Uh, ano lang din siya, no? Uh, you, you do some partial fractions and everything. Kaya lang yung manipulation niya kasi medyo, ano, no? Medyo uh, yung algebra ay uh, somehow a little bit uh, difficult to understand. No, so that's why guys, no, I will be just be giving you, no, uh the direct, okay, the direct uh formula, no, or expression, no, for the second order step response. Okay? So assuming that we have a unit step input, so what will be the step response, guys? So we have C of t, okay, is equal to Okay, no. So A goes here. So dito po nakalagay yung A, guys, kung hindi tayo unit step. Pero kung unit step tayo, you, know, you don't need to put it, no? So this is ano po 1 minus okay look at this carefully guys no so we have e raised to negative sigma dt okay all over okay root of okay 1 minus zeta square okay 1 minus zeta square okay times times we have sine okay of omega dt okay omega dt plus theta okay where yung theta guys is yung na-derive natin during our on-site class which uh, turns out to be yung cosine ng theta na yan that is the damping ratio or the zeta. Okay? So yan, this is the expression guys. Again, uh, the A goes here uh, in the event that the input is not unit step. So dito po natin lalagay yung A natin. No? So by linearity, scaled output is, I mean scaled input will give you a scaled output. Okay? 
So yan. Yan ang ating uh, second order step response. Sir, do we need to memorize the expression? Unfortunately, yes, no. So you need to uh, memorize no the given expression no for the uh, second order step response. All right? Okay. So let's try to answer no uh, one previous exam problem. Okay, no? So this is given out in one of the exams last batch. So let's try to answer this question, guys. So the unit step response of a standard second order system is given by. Okay, so as mentioned, do unit step response ang uh, input natin. In other, uh, I mean unit unit step response yung given, meaning to say yung output ng system. Uh, in a unit step input. Okay, C of t is equal to 1 minus 2 root of 3, 2 up on root of 3, e to the negative t cosine root of 3 t minus pi over 6 C of t. So determine the transfer function of the system. Determine the transfer function of the system. Okay, no? So how are we going to solve this, guys? Okay, no? So uh, it's easy to verify guys no na hindi na standard format yung given sa atin why because the standard format should have been in sine and not in cosine okay so dapat guys naka sine hindi cosine but in this case na cosine yung uh, given natin so we need to uh, employ a proper identity and what is that identity so we know guys no uh, from trigo that the cosine of x okay any angle x is equal to sine of what Sine of, okay, so we have sine of x plus 90 degrees. x plus 90 degrees. So that is already an identity. So identity and guys, no? So in this case, okay, no? So as you can see, no? Uh, suppose, no, isipin nyo this whole thing, what's inside the cosine is x. So, ibig sabihin pala, no, uh, kapag ka nag-add ka ng 90 degrees no, sa loob ng angle natin, instead of cosine, this becomes sine. Gets po? So, di ba, dati cosine ng x siya. Pag naging x plus 90, you can change cosine into sine. Okay? And they are equal. They are equivalent. So, if we're gonna use this identity, okay, uh, yan, uh, and, yan, ano mangyari guys sa magiging expression natin? So, let me rewrite, guys. So, we have C of T. Okay, is equal to quantity. Okay, 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 over root of 3. Okay, and then we have E to the negative T. Okay, guys. And then we have cosine, right? Cosine. So, instead ng cosine, we'll change to sine. Okay, so papayitan na natin yung sine. Ayan, naging sine na siya, guys. Okay, so we have sine of what? Okay, yung x natin. What is the x? The whole thing there. So, you have square root of 3t. Okay, minus pi over 6. So, pwede mo siyang palitan ng sign if you will add 90 degrees. Kaso naka-region, right? Kasi in, in terms ng pi. So, you just add pi over 2. Okay, you'll just add pi over 2, guys. Alright? And then, you have u of t. You have the u of t. Okay. So, what is ano, no? uh, negative pi over 6 plus pi over 2? So, that's positive pi over 3, right? So, that's positive pi over 3. So, in other words, the expression would become, ano guys, no? so let me write this again. The final expression in the standard format na. So, we have C of t is equal to 1 minus 2 over root of 3. Okay? And then, e to the minus t, okay, sine. Sine ng ano guys? Sine ng root of 3. T. Okay. Plus pi over 3. And as you can see here, it's already in the standard format. It's already in the standard format. Okay? Okay. Sige. So now. Okay. Now guys. This pi over 3. Okay. Uh, since nasa standard format na siya. We can actually get this, no? From the standard format, this is theta. So, take note, guys, na kung hindi siya kinunvert sa standard format, your theta would be uh, negative pi over 6, and that is incorrect, right? Ayan, no? So, may nakuha na natin yung theta. Since we're able to get the theta, guys, we can easily get the, ano? Ayan, no? So, if you can still remember, okay, anong formula ng cosine theta? So, and, nagay natin, guys, and we know, guys, that the cosine theta is nothing but the zeta or the damping ratio. So, we have cosine ng pi over 3. Okay. And pi over 3 is uh, 60 degrees, right? 
cosine ng 60 degrees, that is one half. So, the damping ratio, guys, is 0.5. Okay, the damping ratio is 0 0.5. Okay? So, naitindihan, guys? Yes? Yes po. Okay, so now, yeah, no? so meron na tayong damping ratio. So, what's next? Okay, no, we can use, uh, okay, no, so if you remember the general format, guys, right? So, sine of omega dt. Okay, so omega d. Yan. So, based dun sa uh, general expression, no, omega d is equal sa root of 3. And we know, guys, that the uh, omega d is nothing but omega n. Okay, root of 1 minus zeta square. So, 1 minus zeta square. So, therefore, we can get the value of omega n, right? Kasi, uh, you just substitute, right? Root of 3 is equal to omega n. Di atin alam. And then, we have square root of, ano, guys? Okay, 1 minus 0 0.5. Okay, whole square. Okay, no, so you just simply divide and then omega n would be, okay, that would be 2, okay, radian per second. 2 radian per second. So now guys, na alam na po natin, no? So ano yung uh, ating omega d, uh, sorry, omega n, as well as the uh, damping ratio zeta, no? So we can now easily find the transfer function, right? Okay, no? So hence, okay, what will be our transfer function? So, review nga natin ano po yung general format ng transfer function ng second order system, standard prototype. So, yung ating CLTF, closed loop, transfer function. No, so, this is given as, okay, K, okay, omega n square, okay, all over, we have uh, S square, yan, plus uh, 2 zeta omega n s, plus omega n square. So, yan. That's it. Okay? So, nagagets, guys. Uh, now, no, pag wala namang sinabi, the value of k is 1. So, we just put 1 here. I mean, put 1 there. And then, omega n is 2. So, 2 square is 4. Yan. All over. So, we have uh, s square plus, okay, what is 2 times 0.5 times uh, 2 times s? So, that's 2s, right? And then, we have Omega n square again, so that is 4. Okay? Yeah, so since wala naman sinabi yung value ng gain sa problem or yung value ng k, so just leave it as it is. So the answer is 4 upon s square plus 2s plus 4. Alright? Yeah, so that's how we solve this uh, question. So that's the transfer function, no? Directly obtained, no? From the uh, step response. Okay? Now, guys, yeah, no? Uh, if you still also if you still also remember uh during the uh, lecture you know, for for the uh step response ng first order system we are actually able to plot it right when na, na na plot natin siya so in this case okay no uh pwede din nating ma-plot no yung mga graphs no for the uh second order systems okay yung response ng second order system pero uh, yung itsura ng plot natin will vary depending on the value of the zeta okay so the first one here no we have uh, what we call uh, na type ng response which is the underdamp response and the underdamp response guys happens when the value of the damping ratio is between 0 to 1 Okay, so pag value na zeta natin is between 0 to 1, so that is uh, what we call as the underdamp response. So, paano ba nangyayari sa underdamp, guys? So, by the way, no, yung equation natin kanina yung standard, yun yung parang ginagamit natin no, for the uh, underdamp response. Uh, kasi ang mangyari dyan mamaya, guys, as you can see, magbabago-bago yung equation natin. Although ito pa rin yung reference, but if we substitute the value of the zeta, the form will change uh, to something that's uh, quite different no, from the original one. Okay? So, ito yung graph niya, guys. No? Ano napapansin natin? No? So, let me have here this uh, line, guys. Okay. So, this line, okay, ito yung tinatawag nating final value. Assuming that the unit step input, the final value is 1. Okay? So, eventually, uh, the signal will actually settle to a final value which is equal to 1. But as you can see, at the start, hindi pa siya talagang napunta sa 1, right? Ano nangyayari? Meron tayong mga oscillations no so meron tayong oscillations no so the oscillations as you can see no uh, it's very intuitive if you look at the equation meron po kasing sign doon eh no sa formula so dahil meron tayong sign meron tayong oscillations correct yes 
However, okay, these oscillations, as you can see, no, they are not sustained. These oscillations actually uh, decreases. Bumababa yung amplitude nila, guys. No? Until na magsettle na siya sa final value na 1. Okay? Yeah, no? so as, and therefore, since nagsasettle siya sa final value, okay, ibig sabihin, okay, this response exhibits no, a system that is stable. So stable siya, guys. Alright? So stable po siya kasi nagsasettle siya sa final value. May oscillation sa umpisa, but oscillations will die down. Okay, but nga pala nagda-die down oscillation because we have an exponential term here. So this exponential term, okay, contributes to the decay of the oscillations. Okay? Yan. So, now, bakit po naging ganito? So it's very much related no, to the location of the poles. As you can see here, no, from the pole zero map or our S-plane, so, dalawa lang yung poles natin, guys. Okay? And these poles are complex conjugates and located at the left half plane. Okay? So, this is the left half plane, guys, no? LHP. And this is the right half plane, RHP. Okay? So, we have the left half plane and the right half plane. Okay? Ayan, no? So, pag nasa kaliwa yung ano natin, nasa kaliwa yung poles natin, at complex conjugate siya. Okay, by the way, no? Ano pong ibig sabihin ng complex conjugate, guys? What does complex conjugate mean? So, meaning to say, guys, uh, by pair siya lagi. What I'm saying is, for example, di ba? So, let's say that uh, the value of this is negative 3 and this is J4. So, kung meron ka negative 3 plus J4, definitely, you also have, you also have, Okay, negative 3 minus J4. So, ganun po siya. Complex conjugate sila. Alright? Okay, so that's the first case. And ito yung mas, ano, no, pinakakomo na ginagamit. Kaya later on, okay, we're going to cover, okay, yung tinatawag natin transient parameters, no, ng uh, second order, uh, ng underdump response, no? So, kasi madalas siyang gamitin kaya mayroon siyang mga transient parameters. So, by the way, no, uh, bago ko malimutan, as you can see, no, nagsiseta siya sa final value. So, definitely, it has a settling time. So, by default, the settling time is 4 over zeta omega n. Yan. So, more on this later, guys. No, We're going to cover this again. Yan. But for now, tandaan nyo na since dahil nagsisettle siya to 1 eventually, so meron siyang settling time. And the settling time is 4 over zeta omega n. Okay? All right. So moving on no sa so next natin we have the ano no so yung kanina di ba yung case na na-cover po natin yung first case is that the damping ratio is between 0 to 1 now if the damping ratio the zeta no so is actually equal to 0 saktong 0 siya guys so anong klase ng response yan so this is what we call as the undamped response okay so, paano yung undamped response? Di ba ito yung original equation, guys? Ipa-plug in natin dito, guys, na ang value ng zeta ay zero. Like this one, no? Zeta square, no? So, this is zero, right? Okay. And then, ang formula ng sigma d is zeta omega n. So, this is uh, zeta omega n. So, this is zero times omega n, right? So, this would become zero also. So, e to zero siya, bali. So, bali, e to zero over square root ng one. So, they are one, right? So technically this whole thing ay magiging 1. Kaya ito yung may iwan, guys. Okay? Uh and, and and also and also, okay? So the theta is simply r cosine ng uh, zeta, right? So this is uh r cosine ng zeta. And if that is 0, that's pi over 2, right? r cosine ng uh, 0 is pi over 2. Kaya magiging ganito yung expression niya. Okay? Or if we apply identity, tama di ba? Ano yung identity natin? Uh cosine of x, okay, is equal to uh, sign ng uh, x plus pi over 2 or 90 degrees. Kaya napalitan natin siya to be this one. So ito na yung pinaka-final na expression talaga na ginagamit po natin. So ito yung pinaka-final na expression na ginagamit natin. Okay, as you can see, no, ano nangyari? The output or the response of a second order system, so yung step response niya, okay, kapag zeta is equal to 0, nawala na yung ano guys? Na wala na exponential term, right? Purely ano na lang, sine or cosine na lang. Purely sinusoidal na lang siya. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, guys, no, that since this is purely sinusoidal, ang nangyayari, guys, it, it is ano, oscillating indefinitely. Okay? Nag-oscillate siya. And nothing stops the oscillation. Okay? So, ito yung one, eh. Okay? Ito yung one. And then, dito sa taas, okay, ito yung ano, guys, ito yung two. Ayan, so, this is the two. 
So, sure kasi guys, no, uh, yung signal natin ay nag-oscillate. Minsan ang value niya ay 0, minsan ang value niya ay 1, minsan ang value niya ay 2. So definitely, this is not stable because it doesn't settle to a final value. However, this is not unstable. Why? Because the output is still bounded. Correct? Bounded pa rin siya, di ba? So alam natin na hindi siya nagsisettle sa final value but the outputs, okay, I mean the output waveform is bounded. Meaning to say 0 to 2, hindi siya lumalagpas no, uh, ng 0 at ng 2. So pagka ganun guys, no, hindi siya stable, but technically hindi na siya unstable because it doesn't violate the BIBO stability. So therefore, this is called what? This is uh, a system that exhibits what we call as marginally stable. Okay? Uh, pagdating natin ng stability analysis guys, no, so mas uh, pag-uusapan natin no, ano ba yung marginally stable na yan. But for now, tatandaan nyo lang na may pinaka-key term dyan. Pag ang system natin ay marginally stable, Okay, ibig sabihin guys, meron tayong ano, sustained oscillations. No, so hindi po nagde-decrease yung amplitude ng oscill oscillations natin. So now, when we are dealing with the pole locations guys, as you can see here, no, the poles are conjugates. Okay? Hindi siya ano, no complex conjugate because purely imaginary po siya. And they are actually located at the j omega axis. So nasa j omega axis guys, no? Yeah, nasa J omega axis. So you can see here, no? So ito yung dalawang poles natin po. They are conjugates and they are located at the J omega axis. Okay? So malinaw? Naiintindihan? Yes, yes. Okay. Now guys, no? So okay na tayo sa case ng underdump. Okay? Uh, yung, yun yung 0 to 1 na zeta. And then we have the undump. Okay? The zeta would, would be equal to 0. By the way, no? Kaya nga yung term niya is undump. Again, what is zeta? Zeta is the damping ratio, right? So, damping ratio. You know, so, one uh, thing to remember this one. So, this is a da damping ratio, right? So, if your damping ratio is zero, meaning to say you don't, you don't have damping, right? So, undamp. Okay? Okay, next case natin, guys, is yung tinatawag na critically damp. Okay? So, ano sabihin ng critically damp? So, pag sinabing critically damp, okay, the value of the zeta is equal to one. Okay? So, I think zeta natin. So, the value is equal to 1. The value is equal to 1. So, saktong 1, guys. So, pagka ganyan, critically damp. Okay, no? So, I will not ano, no? uh, derive it anymore. Yan, medyo mahaba kasi ito, no? Gumagamit ito ng L'Hopital's rule. Okay, indeterminate form. no? So, sa calculus, kung maaalala siya. But the thing that you should see here is the result. Okay, ano yung result, guys? Walang sinusoidal term. So, sa critically damp, walang sinusoidal term. So dahil wala sa sinusoidal term, no, what can you expect guys? No, look at your output. So yung output natin guys na yung ating step response, as you can see here guys, walang oscillations. Actually kamukha siya ng first order, right? So kamukha siya ng first order. Uh, ang pagkakaiba lang is this one is a little bit uh, faster to rise, okay, compared to the first order system. So this is critically dumb. Okay, critically damp guys, no? So wala siyang oscillations guys, uh, ano lang talagang it reaches uh 1, it rises uh fast. Okay? Yan. So definitely this is stable, correct? Stable siya because again, the stability requirement is that it settles to a final value and as you can see, it settles to a final value. And which value is that? So yung uh TS natin dito, settling time. Actually, yung ginagamit natin dito ay 6 okay over uh, omega n. And actually, 6 over zeta omega n, but the zeta for the uh, critically dump is 1, so 6 over omega n na lang. Okay, no? so dito guys, no, I forgot to mention anong settling time nito. Yan, di ba? Undump response. As you can see, it doesn't settle, so no settling time. So no TS, no? Yan, so no TS. Oh, shall we say zero settling time? Possibly. Basta wala siyang settling time. Yan, ito, ano, no? 6 over omega n. Now, in terms ng pole location, okay, as you can see here, no, yung poles natin are real. Kasi nga, wala tayong oscillations. Uh, the oscillations is attributed uh, to the pole location na merong imaginary component. So kung wala kang imaginary component, purely real, okay, wala siyang, ano guys, wala siyang, uh, what you call this, wala siyang oscillations. Now, uh, the thing here about the critically damp, okay, uh, because zeta is equal to 1, what will happen is that the poles are located at the same location. So, ganito yung drawing niya. Hence, yung drawing niya. Ayan, ayan. Magkapatong, guys, no? So, they are located at the same location, yung poles po natin. 
So one thing to remember no pagdating sa critically damp systems. Okay? All right. So next natin guys no so actually uh, hindi pa tayong last pero doon sa mga usual na ginagamit nito yung huli natin which is the overdump. Okay? Paano pag sinabing overdump guys? When I say overdump, uh the damping ratio is lagpas ng 1. Okay? So as you can see here guys no so almost similar yung itsura niya saan sa uh, critically damp Okay, uh, nga lang ito ay mas mabagal mag-rise. So steeper yung slope o yung ano no, yung pag-rise nung kanina compare dito, right? So ito medyo mas mabagal kasi nga na sobra naman yung damping. Damping is the one that stops the oscillation. So kung overdamp, it is overly stop. Parang ganun, no? Okay. The expression here, okay guys, no? So hindi talaga ito yung pure expression kaya lang uh, yung pure, yung ano niya, yung totoong expression niya is medyo masakit tignan sa mata. Okay, but this is valid also. You just need to remember that this A and B are constants. So, mga constants po yan, no? Uh, makukuha yan pa nag-partial fraction ka. So, constant yan, no? Okay, so, yan. so these are constants. Constant value po yan. Okay? Yeah, no? So, medyo magulo kasi yung expression niya, guys. Although, itong A and B can be actually, may, 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 may formula po yan, no? But uh, I don't suggest that you do that, you memorize that. If ever that it appears on an exam, so you just do the partial fraction decomposition, right? So, pwede kayo mag-partial fraction, and then from there, you can solve for the ano, no, the uh, inverse Laplace. And you'll be able to come up with the same answer. Okay? So again, uh, as I mentioned, no, kagaya siya ng critically damp, wala siyang ano guys, wala siyang oscillation, no? Because in the formula itself, puro mga exponentials lang. E to the minus P1T and E to the minus P2T. Okay? Naintindihan? Yes? Yes. So wala siyang ano guys, no? Wala siyang sinusoidal component. So parang ano din siya, no? Mukha-mukha siya ng first order, but this one is a little bit slower to rise. Okay? Uh... Pretty much similar with the critically damp. Of course, this is also stable, definitely, because it settles to a final value. So, dahil nag-settles siya sa final value, sir, anong value nito? So, that is TS is equal to, gaya na formula kanina, no? 6 up on. Okay, eto ngayon may zeta na. Zeta omega n. Okay? All right. All right. Yeah, so, that is the equation no, for this one. So, 6 over zeta omega n. Yan. Anong pagkakaiba niya doon sa critically damp? Ang pagkakaiba niya, guys, sa critically damp is that the poles are real also, definitely. Nasa LHP also, but not in the same location. Okay? Not in the same location. So, magkaiba. So, let's say this is the P1 and this is the P2. Okay, guys? Alright. So, dito, same location. Ah, by the way, syempre, nasa LHP. So, yun ang pinaka-main criteria. Ha? Ayan, na. Although wala pa tayo sa stability, sasabihin ko na guys, na ang pinaka-main criteria natin para masabi na ang system ay stable, dapat ang poles ng kanyang transfer function guys ay nasa kaliwa, nasa left half plane. Okay? Bakit sir? Bakit kailangan nasa left half plane? Kasi pag may isa lang na pole na napunta sa right half plane, ito yung mangyayari. Negatively dump siya. As you can see here, no, ano nangyari guys? So mahina yung oscillations niya sa umpisa, okay? but eventually the oscillations gets larger and larger. Okay? It this this happens because ano guys? This happens because ah uh, meron kang pole sa RHP. So dahil meron kang pole sa RHP, okay, yung envelope mo actually increases, okay? Without bounds. Okay? So dahil ganoon, no? Yan, ibig sabihin meron kang ano no, ah uh, uh, pole sa RHP. Okay? So one or more of the poles that you have is located in the RHP. Doesn't matter kung ito ay conjugate or uh, real. Basta kahit isa lang guys, ha, tatandaan po yun. Kahit isa lang ang mapunta sa right half plane. Ay, sorry. Automatic yun guys. No? So the system would be unstable. So let's say nandito yan. No? So, nandito yung isa. Okay? Although itura niyan, ano, eh, third order system to yun. No? Yan yung pinagkuha na ako ng graph. Okay? But technically ang nangyari is yan nga. May oscillation siya. And then dahil meron kang pole located at the right half plane, so yung envelope niya is increasing indefinitely. So therefore, this is unstable, right? Bakit siya unstable? Kasi not bounded, no? So na-violate yung Bebo stability. Because you have a bounded input, a unit step, but the output is unbounded. Okay? Alright. So okay na? Clear na, guys? No? So each and every step response? Okay, sige. Let's try to answer some examples. 
Okay, so let's have this one, guys. Classify the step response of each of the following transfer functions. Okay, as you might have noticed, no, ano lang ang kailangan natin, guys? Ano po ang kailangan natin for us to be able to, ano, to classify the step response? Ang kailangan lang po natin is nothing but the damping ratio. Okay, damping ratio lang. So, for each and every transfer function, kukunin natin si damping ratio. So, paano nga kunin yung damping ratio, sir? Okay, no? So, uh, ang ginagawa doon, bawa part A tayo, no? Yan, so let's say A. So, yung denominator natin, yung constant doon, like in this case, 25, equate nyo lang po doon, no? Sa omega n square yan. Gets? So, in other words, no? So, this is omega n square is equal to 25. Okay, so what is omega n, guys? Omega n is 5 radian per second. 5 radian per second. Hmm. Tapos yung gitna naman, ano po yung nasa gitna? Yung nasa gitna, that is 2 zeta omega n, no? So, this one, guys, no? Ayan, itong 6 na ito. So, ito yung 2 zeta omega n. Alright? So, we have 2. Okay, zeta omega n is equal to, ano guys? 6. Alright. So, we have 2. Zeta, hindi natin alam. Omega n, nakumpute natin kanina, diba? That is 5. And this is equal to, ano guys? This is equal to, 6. Okay, so that's 10, right? So, zeta is equal to 6 over 10 or 0.6. Ayan, no? So, since mabala na tayo ng damping ratio, so we can write now, no? Kapag ang damping ratio mo, the zeta is between 0 to 1, right? 0.6 is between 0 to 1. So, therefore, this system is uh, called underdamp. So, yung step response niya is underdamp. Okay? Is that clear? Malinaw, guys? Yes? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. So, next. Let's go. Woo! Woo! Ayan, no? Ayan. So, what's next? Okay, no? So, we have part B. Ayan, no? So, letter B. Ayan, ano yung letter B, guys? No? So, actually, pwede natin diretso yun eh. Kaya ba? Di ba? Pwede ko na isulat rekta, no? Omega N. Ano omega N natin? No? So, kunin nyo lang yung square root ng 16. That is 4. That is 4 radian per second. O, tas equate nyo na agad sa gitna. So, we have 2. Okay, zeta times 4. Okay, is equal to, ano yung nasa gitna, guys? We have 8. Okay? Yung nasa gitna nung denominator, no? So, that is 8. So, bali, 2 uh, times 4 is 8, right? So, therefore, zeta is equal to 1. Zeta is nothing but 1. So, itong 1 na ito, no? So, if the zeta is equal to 1, how can we classify that? We can call it as the critically damp. We can call it as the critically damp. And critically damp siya. Okay? And last, no, but not the least, we have the part C. Okay, so, ano yung part C natin, guys? So, part C we have... Okay. Sige. All right. So actually, pwede natin diretso in yan, guys. No? Rekta na. Doon sa 2 zeta omega n. Tama ba? Pwede? Pwede. Sige. Woo! Oh, so, C, part C. Ano yung nasa gitna natin? 2 zeta omega n, right? So, 2 zeta. Ano yung omega n? Square root ng 4. So, that is 2. So, is equal to, is equal to 6. Which is yung nasa gitna, guys. Yung 6. So, that is 6 over 4. That is 3 halves. 1.5. So, 1.5 yung value ng ating damping ratio. 1.5 yung value ng ating damping ratio. And if it's 1.5, no, so it's greater than 1, we can classify this system as overdump. So this is overdump. Correct? Yes? Yes, sir. So this is overdump. Overdump. Alright? So naitindihan? Nakakuha? Okay? Yes? Yes, sir. Alright. Okay. Yan. So, next topic tayo, guys. Yes, yes. Okay. Alright. Yan. So, okay na? Okay. So, kung nare-recall nyo, guys, no, dun sa on-site lecture natin, uh, we have actually derived, no, Uh, several transient parameters ng first order response right so ano ano ba yung mga na-derive natin doon we have the uh, time constant settling time rise time right okay for the first order 
So now guys, uh, we are talking about the second order. Okay, specifically the underdump no system. So ano yung transient parameters no nung step response ng isang underdump system. Okay? Yan. So uh underdump ko na alala yung itsura niya. So ito dire-draw natin siya dito. So as you can see guys no, we have the final value of 1. Pero sa umpisa nagkakaroon ng oscillations yung ano natin, yung ating uh, signal and eventually okay the response will actually uh, settle to a final value which is equal to the input in this case the input is 1 which is the step response okay so the first transient parameter that we would like to uh, explore is what we call as the peak time okay so ano po yung peak time so peak time no so this refers to the time taken by the step response to reach the peak overshoot ano po yung peak overshoot okay gato kasi di ba Meron kang final value na 1 and since meron kang oscillations there are instances that the uh, step response uh, step response actually goes beyond goes above goes over your ano guys uh, final value lumalag pa siya sa final value at yung mga instances na yon no ang tawag doon ay overshoot okay aso kasi no maraming overshoot tama yan this is overshoot no so actually this is called the first overshoot and first overshoot first os right and kasi ayan yung unang beses na lumagpas siya sa final value so if you want you can find the second overshoot so this is second os we also have the yan third overshoot third os so on and so forth so naiintindihan guys nakukuha po yes ngayon when we say peak time is yung time taken by the response to reach the peak overshoot so, ano peak overshoot? Yung unang-una, right? So, that's the first overshoot. Okay? So, mayan. May formula lang yun, guys. So, what is the equation that we use? We'll not derive it anymore. So, yung TP is equal to, okay, pi, okay, pi, up on omega d. Okay? So, that's the formula that we use. Okay, guys? Okay. Ngayon, uh, what if ipahanap sa atin, sir? Ano yung time ng second overshoot, third overshoot? So, possible yun, no? So, that's why may modification yung formula natin. We will have the n here. n pi over omega d. And that is the full equation. Okay? So, we have n pi over omega d. Nagets po? Where n is yung ano, guys? No? So, kunyari, pag first overshoot, n mo is equal to 1. E, paano pag second overshoot, guys? Anong gagamitin natin? Mm hmm? Anong gagamitin? Kaya, I, we want to find the second overshoot. And actually, this is a, ano, no? Uh, di ba, may board exam tayo. So, natanong to sa board exam dati, third over, uh, third peak. Third peak yung term nila, eh, no? Yung do sa board exam. But anyway, overshoot is the synonymous to peak almost, no? So, hinanap is the time for the third peak. Ayan, no? So, anong gagamitin? Okay, no? Oh, mali. <laughs> okay, mali. Hindi, hindi, ano, no? Hindi two. Okay. So, kasi guys, if n is equal to two, what you will be getting is actually this one. Okay? Yung nasa baba. Ah. So, if n is equal to 1 nasa taas, pag n is equal to 2 yung nasa baba. Yung nasa baba, dahil it's below the final value, ang tawag dito, this is actually the first undershoot. This is the first undershoot. Okay? So, US na lang from now, no? So, we call this as US from now. Undershoot. So, in other words, this is the, ano, second US. This is the second US. So on and so forth. Okay? So, ibig sabihin pala, sir, no, if I want to find the second overshoot, what is my n? N is 3. Okay? Yan, no? So, summarize natin dito, guys. Ano yung value ng n? Yan, no? So, if n is even, n is odd pala. Okay? What we will be getting is actually the okay, overshoot. O, pang overshoot yan. Okay? So, if n is odd, ay, if n is even, Okay, ano na may makukuha natin, guys? So, if n is even, ang makukuha natin is pang undershoot. Okay, we will be getting yung pang undershoot. Hi, guys! Alright. Ayan. But by default, okay, pag walang sinabi, tinanong lang yung peak time, so, syempre yung una yun, no? So, bali, ang magiging formula is pi over omega d. Okay? So, yung n is just uh, if 
uh, ever na kailangan nating hanapin no yung ibang times to reach the different like undershoot and overshoots. Okay guys? And I hope that's clear. Yes, yes. Okay, next. Ayan. So this is a little bit controversial because Ah, uh, our book, okay, our book actually, no, yung uh, control systems by Norman Nice. So, uh, he uses a different definition for the rise time compared to some of other textbooks na ginagamit. Okay? Ayan, no, so medyo iba. Alright? So, anong susundin, sir? No, so we will not follow the uh, one that is being given by our textbook. Uh, primarily because no, the one that he gives is uh, not applicable for underdump systems. Okay? So medyo may confusion ng konti ron, no? So pang hindi, hindi pang underdump kasi yun. Usually, yung binigay niyang equation ay ginagamit natin for uh, overdump or critically dump. Okay? But for underdump, guys, iba po kasi ang definition ng rise time. And what is that? Ang rise time, guys, yung time taken no, by the response to reach the final value for the first time. Here, ito yun, guys. no? Ito ba, nag-start tayo sa zero. So, ang mangyari sa step response natin, magra-rise siya, di ba? And then eventually, okay, as you can see here, eventually, it will reach the final value. So, ito yun. Na-reach na yung final value. Pero dahil sabi ko nga, uh, may oscillation siya, lalagpas siya sa final value. Okay? And it will be reaching the final value again for the second time. Okay? And it will be reaching the final value again for the third time. It will be reaching the again for the fourth time, so on and so forth. Okay? So ngayon ko ang kailangan natin, guys, is for the first time. Okay? Ayan, for the first time. So let me... Uh, highlight this, no? For the first time, kailangan natin siya. So, what would be the formula or equation na gagamitin natin? So, we have the rise time. Okay? Is equal to... So, yung rise time natin ay equal to... Okay, we have pi minus theta. Uh, sir, anong theta yan? Yung theta dun sa ano, no? Sa uh, arc cosine ng zeta. Okay? Over omega d. Okay? Ngayon, as you might have guessed, no? Minsan, kailangan natin nung pang second time, pang third time, pang fourth time, if ever na kailanganin. So, you just put N here. Kasi for the first time, N is equal to 1. But uh, for other times, no, so you just uh, change the value of N there to get them. Okay? Alright. Yeah, so, we have N pi minus theta over omega d. So, that's the formula for the rise time. Again, pag walang na-mention, guys, uh, first time lagi yun, no? So, n siya. n is equal to 1. Okay? Alright. Okay. Let's go back here, guys, no? Ayan. Uh, kung nare-recall nyo, no? Uh, sabi nga natin, ang nangyayari is that uh, since may oscillations tayo sa umpisa, uh, there are some instances, no, that the final value, the, the step response actually goes beyond the final value. So, yun nga yung nakocompute natin peak time dun, no? right? Okay, ngayon, kung ang gusto natin kunin is yung gano'ng kataas siya lumagpas, okay, dun sa final value, okay, in the graph, ito po yun, no? Ito yung tinutukoy ko na uh, parameter na yon this one. Yan, gano'ng siya kataas nag, uh, ano yung, ano niya, excess niya from the final value. Actually, this is what we call as the MP. So, this is the MP. Okay? Uh, MP because uh, ito yung largest. This is the peak overshoot. Okay? Actually, yung overshoot is yung difference niya from the final value. Okay? Difference nung pinaka-peak or pinaka-taas, pinaka-maximum value. Okay? Yan. So, yun yung tinatawag na peak overshoot. Okay? So, from the graph, it's easy to see the ano ang formula ng peak overshoot MP. So, yung MP is equal sa ano, C max. Okay? C max. Cmax is the maximum value attained no by the uh, signal okay by the step response okay minus okay c of infinity so c of infinity stands for the final value no nung ating uh, uh, tawag dito nung ating step response so the final value yan so the equation natin ha yeah this is this is the equation for d okay peak overshoot and by a definition, they are the same, right? Difference ng maximum value attained by the step response and the final value. Okay? Ayan, no? So, now. Okay. Now, guys. All right. 
Okay, listen. Sometimes peak overshoot is expressed in percentage uh, rather than the yeah, the, the the peak. Okay? So, kung in terms ng percent siya, so meron tayong tinatawag na percent overshoot, percent OS, and that is equal to what? Okay, anong formula niyan, guys? So, we have the Cmax. Okay? So, we have the Cmax minus C of infinity. Okay, all over C of infinity. Okay? Yan. Or final value, in other words. Okay? So, yan yung formula natin, guys. So, that is our formula. Okay? Hey, sorry. Hindi maganda yung pagkakabox, but yeah, that's okay. Anyway, so now guys, okay, ha? Ah, sige. Uh, listen, listen. For unit step input, no? So may observation kasi tayo dito, no? So for unit step input, yan. So for unit step input guys, alam natin na ano no, uh, the idea is that kung meron kang unit step input, the system will settle to also no to a final value which is equal to 1. So yung C of infinity would be equal to 1. So for unit step input no, what will be the value of the MP? So yung MP natin that would be ano po, nothing but okay, C max minus 1. Okay? And for unit step input yan no. So this is true for the unit step input. Now, what's interesting is this one, no? Okay, if you get the percent overshoot, okay, if you get the percent overshoot, look at this. Percent overshoot, di ba anong formula natin? C max minus C of infinity over C of infinity. So, this becomes, ano guys? C max minus 1 all over 1. Right? C max minus 1 over 1. And what is that? That is C max minus 1. Okay, also. Okay, also. C max minus 1 also. Di ba? Parehas lang siya. Okay? So in other words, no, this is percent overshoot, guys. For uh, unit step input, okay, this is equal sa MP. But this is only true if you have unit step input. No, Be mindful of that. Okay, so may mga discrepancy siya na ganun eh, no? So this is only true guys, no, if you have a unit step input. So kung input natin ay hindi unit step, hindi pwedeng gamitin na pag-equate mo silang dalawa. You need to use the formula itself. Okay, yung C max minus C of infinity, tsaka C max minus C of infinity over C of infinity. Okay, now guys, yan no, meron po tayong derived formula or equation na ginagamit now for the what? Okay, for the uh, percent overshoot, no? So, I mean, yung percent overshoot, uh, not the peak overshoot. So, anong formula yun, sir? So, another equation that we can use, no? If we want to solve for the percent overshoot, okay, this is what? This is, ano po? Uh, e raised to negative pi cotangent theta. Uh, by the way, no? Since the name percent overshoot, no? So, dapat naka-express tayo in terms ng ano, guys? ng percentage, no? Pagka percent overshoot ang pinag-uusapan. Okay? So, ilang okay guys? Ready, ready? Alright. And last but not the least, no? We have the concept of settling time. So, ano po yung settling time? So, nare-recall nyo guys, no? Ang settling time, may error criterion siya. So, ganun din dito, no? Sa under the uh, system. So, ano ba definition ng settling time? This refers to the time taken by the step response to enter the 2% error band and maintain it. So, let's say guys, no, in this case, ito yung uh, error band natin. 2% daw, ano? Yan. So, let's say ito. Okay, no? So, dito, since band po siya, okay, no? So, 2% above the final value, which is 1.02. So, ito yung 1.02, guys, no? Okay, this is 1.02. So, 1.02 to no? 1.02. Okay? And then we have another 
uh, one here. Okay? Ito naman, yung nasa baba naman. Okay? Yan. 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 So, this is what? Yeah. Bayari ko lang, no? Para maganda. So, yeah, green. Ito naman yung point ninety eight no? Yan, kasi minus 2% naman ng uh, uh, final value. So, let's say this is 0.98. So, as you can see, no? Uh, Nag-oscillate tayo. Okay? Uh, hindi naman kailangan natin totally hantayin na makapasok sila sa, ano, no? Na, I mean, maging once siya. So, once na, ano, guys, no? Ito, no? Once na we are able to... Uh, I mean the the step response was able to enter the two percent error one and maintain it, no? Ni siya ni na siya la lumabas don. So therefore, that is already the settling time. That is already the settling time. Okay. Now, guys, this is calculated again for their two percent error criterion. Pag hindi po sinabi ang assumption again is two percent error criterion pa den. Okay. So if nothing is mentioned, no. So this is still two percent, no. Pag gawa lang sinabi. Okay. So, I hope that's clear. Alright. So, anong formula ng settling time? Di ba nabigay ko na siya kanina no, during the introduction ng session? I mean, dun sa nung kinaklassify natin yung mga step response. But let me write it again. So, we have TS is equal to 4 over zeta omega n. Okay? So, this is the equation that we use for the Okay, this is the equation that we use for the uh, settling time. Ngayon guys, sir, what if hindi po siya 2%, no? Okay, pwede po ba mabago? Actually, yes, for this one. So, bale, itong 4 na ito, okay, no? So, dito po siya galing actually, no? So, ln of, okay, 100 over the error, no? I mean, yung... Uh, I mean yung hindi hindi decimal ah like di ba ko nyare L ng ano no L ng 100 over 2 in this case as in hindi po 2% na so L ng 100 over 2 Alright, okay, so that's give us 3.9 something so round up tayo lagi in this case so that is 4 Okay so if 5% error ban no so uh let me check no pagka 5% error ban anong magiging uh, ano natin settling time so that is ln ng 100 over 5 so 2.995 so 3 so 3 over zeta omega n that is the uh, settling time no for uh 2% uh, sorry for 5% error ban okay but unless otherwise stated ang assumption we have the 2% error ban okay so naunawaan guys na gets po okay sige so now uh let's try to uh answer no uh the exam paper uh that uh was given last year in the last batch. Okay, so try natin sagutan no kung kayang kaya. So the unit step response of a unity feedback system is shown in the figure. So ito po siya. So if the system has an OLTF of G of S equals K upon S times the S plus one, so determine MP percent overshoot zeta and omega n. Okay. So yun muna yung una natin gawin, yung first part. So, pinapasol po sa atin. Okay, we're asked to solve for okay, these uh, parameters. No? First is MP. Okay, how are we going to solve for MP? So, that would be our solution. Solution. Okay, so let's study the plot. So, under dump siya, no? Yan, this is an under dump response kasi may oscillation siya at the start. And although hindi naman pinakita, but it will uh, eventually settle to a final value. So, under dump po yan. Okay? So, as you can see, the, the highest point that was reached no, by the uh, step response is 1.254. So, ito yung Cmax, definitely. Right? So, this is the Cmax. And of course, though, the final value is 1 because this is, a uni uh, this is a unit step response. Okay? So, for part A, so, paano gagawin natin sa part A, guys? MP muna. So, anong formula ng MP? So, ang formula ng MP is C max minus, ano, uh, C of infinity. So, in this case, is 1.254, okay, minus 1. So, what will be the value of MP, guys? So, MP is nothing but 0 0.254. 0 0.254.
Okay, next question. Okay, we're asked to solve for the percent overshoot. Okay. Ang percent overshoot, no? So, you can uh, use the formula also. What's that? 1.254. Okay, minus 1 upon 1. So, you'll be getting 0 0.254 as well. Okay, parehas lang. And tama nga, di ba? Uh, based dun sa observation na binigay ko po sa inyo kanina, na kapag uh, uh, unit step input tayo, Okay, the percent overshoot is the same as the uh, peak overshoot. Kaya lang, itong 0.254 usually, pag naka-percent overshoot, we express it in percentage. So, ang pinaka-final answer natin ay naka-percentage, guys. No? So, yung percent overshoot is 25.4%. Ay, sorry. Okay. So next, okay, zeta. How can you get the zeta? No. So if you still remember guys, no, uh, we have a formula that we can utilize no for the percent overshoot. Okay? And and what is that, sir? No. So for the zeta. So we can use the percent overshoot formula and what is that? So in percent overshoot formula natin, we have e raised to negative pi, okay, cotangent theta. Okay? So, yung percent overshoot na gagamitin nyo, syempre, yung naka-decimal form, ha? Yung 0 0.254. Hindi po yung naka-percent form. So, equal siya sa e raised to, okay, negative pi cotangent theta. Okay? Yan. So, uh, you can use your calculators or you can do it manually. Okay, no? So, but take note, guys, sa pag ginamit nyo yung calc nyo, I suggest na ang gawin nyo, ito yung gawin nyo yung x, no? Hindi yung angle mismo. So, this whole thing, gawin nyo itong x. And then, you can uh, use the solve function ng calculator. Okay? So, you can do it that way. Okay, para, ano, no? Para hindi magkaroon ng uh, error, no? Ayan. So, may mga magiging answer tayo, right? Pagka nag-use kayo ng calculator. Kaya lang yung magiging answer doon, take note, guys, that it is in the, ano, cotangent theta pa yon no? So, cotangent theta is whatever yung answer na makukuha natin. Okay, and then we can take the reciprocal. So, tangent theta. And tangent theta is whatever yung nakuha nyo na reciprocal. So, 1 over nung answer natin. Okay? And then, uh, kung kukunin natin guys yung ano, theta. Ayan, so let's get the theta guys. So, what will be the value of theta? So let me do it, guys. And yeah, tapo a one point thirty seven something, and then uh we'll take the reciprocal of that. So we have uh zero point seven two nine seven, and then arc tangent of that. Okay, so we have. Oops, sorry. And uh, so. Uh, make sure na naka-region kayo, no? Ayan. Ayan. So, wait lang, ha? Ayan. Sorry. Joke lang, joke lang. Mali pala yung nakuha ko kasi hindi ko nalagay yung pie, no? So, for a moment, no? So, 0.254. Yan. And then, uh, take the reciprocal of this. And arc tangent no answer. Okay. So, ito yung mga lalabas, guys. Ito yung angle natin. 1 point. Okay. 1, 5, 9, uh, 5. No? So, yan. let us use four decimal places. Uh, para kahit mag-round off in between calculations, hindi mawala yung values. Okay, so that is theta. But we need the zeta, the damping ratio, no? So, paano ang formula ng damping ratio kung nare-recall pa? So, damping ratio is nothing but cosine of d theta. So, cosine ng theta natin. So, kung yun lang cosine ng angle natin. Yan, no? Yan. So, we have... Cosine ng uh, 1.1595. Okay, so we have 0 0.39979, approximately 0 0.4. 
So this is our damping ratio, 0 0.4. Okay, guys? So nagets po? Ah, okay. And now, no, we need to get omega n. How can we find omega n? No? So ano pong gagamitin nating parameter uh, to solve for omega n? What should we use? Okay, no? So as you can see, no, uh, we can use the... Ano po itong tree na to? No? So from the graph, what is this tree here? So itong tree na to, no, this is actually your peak time, correct? Because the time to reach the peak overshoot is the peak time. So using the peak time, so using TP... So, natin, ha? so, using TP. Yan, gamitin natin yung peak time, guys. So, anong formula ng peak time po? Peak time is n pi over omega d, but your n is 1. So, TP is actually pi over omega d. So, this is pi upon omega d. So, may value yung TP natin? That is 3. So, equal po ito sa, okay, we have the pi here. And then, ano po yung omega d? This is omega n root of 1 minus theta square. So, 1 minus 0 0.4 square. 1 minus 0 0.4 square. So, we can solve for omega n, guys. So, what will be the value for that? Okay. So, I'm getting 1 point. Okay. Uh, 1, 4, uh, 2, 6. Okay. Radian per second. Radian per second. Okay, guys, yeah. So that's the four uh, items for part A. Those are the four items for part A. Okay, so next. Okay, no? So part B. Anong sabi sa part B, guys? We're asked to solve for what naman? Okay, solve for the constants T and K. No? So medyo, yan. Uh, medyo mahirap. Kanina madali lang, right? So ito medyo mahirap ng konti. Okay. So, para masolve natin yung constants T and K, asan ba yung constants T and K na yun? Nasa OLTF. So, from the OLTF, okay, okay, we can get the CLTF. And notice, guys, that this is a unity feedback system. So, what's the formula that we use to get the uh, closed-loop transfer function from the open-loop transfer function? So, we have what? Okay, the formula that we use is the numerator over the denominator plus the numerator. So, ano numerator natin? K. Ano denominator natin? ES square plus S. Okay, T S square plus S. Okay, plus, anong numerator natin? K. Kaya lang, uh, as you can see, no, yung itsura niya hindi siya parang proper because the proper transfer function ang leading dapat ay ng, uh, sa denominator ang leading is 1. Eh, may T tayo dun. So, multiply natin to guys by what? Okay, tama ba? We can multiply this by 1 up on T divided by 1 up on T. Okay. So, what will be the result, guys, if we do that? So, we have K over T divided by, okay, so we have the S square plus 1 over T, uh, what's that? 1 over T S plus K over T. K over T. Okay. And actually, no, so we can... Uh, Compare this no to the standard transfer function no so we have omega n square upon s square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square so we can compare okay so the gain is one because nothing is mentioned in the problem about the gain so hindi ko na nilagay yung k kasi baka malito kayo dahil may k din sa kabilang side okay so I just write it as one okay no. So, by comparing, we can compare coefficients, right? So, by comparing, hmm. so usually, yung dulo yung compare natin, no? but this time, yung gitna, kasi uh, 1 over t lang anong doon, and we can easily solve that. So, by comparing, ano ba yung nasa gitna nito? Tama ba? This is 1 over t. No? Tama, no? So, this is 1 over t, nasa gitna. So, sa kabilang side, ano po yung nasa gitna? We have 2 zeta, omega n. So, this is 2 zeta, omega n. So, we can compare. Okay? So, pag kinompare natin, we have 1 upon t. Yan is equal to, okay, 2. Okay, what's the value of zeta? That is 0 0.4. Yung na-compute natin kanina. And then, what is uh, omega n? So, our omega n is equal to, anong value nun? Yung kanina, guys. So, we have 1.1426. 1.1426. 1 
1426. Okay? Ayan o. So, hence, so value of T. Ayan, maging value ng T natin, guys. So, we have 2 into 0.4 into 1.1426. Take the reciprocal. That is 1.09. Okay. So, 1.09. Okay. Uh, 399. So, 4. 4, 0. Okay. So, nag-gets po? Okay, no? Oh, by comparing again, okay, oh, oh, comparing again, yung mga constants na may compare natin, like, uh, what do you mean, sir? This one, k over t. And i-compare natin kay omega n square. So, this one, omega n square. So, we will compare. Okay? So, compare lang natin. Let's go. So, we have k over t. So, k over t, by comparing again to, is equal sa omega n square. Omega n square. Eh, yung omega, we are able to get it earlier, right? So, we have the k. Yatin alam. Yung t, yung nakuha po natin kanina, no? So, we can write 1.0940. Uh, uh, Yan, is equal to omega n square. Omega is 1.1426 square. Okay? Okay, sige. So, what would be the value of k? Yan, no? So, we can solve we can solve for the value of k. So, 1.0940 times 1.1426 whole square. So, we have 1.428. 1.428. 1.428. Okay. So, that is the value for k. All right. Okay, guys. Right. And last but not the least, no, in this uh, particular question, part C, we are asked to solve for the what? We are asked to solve for the, ano guys, uh, solve down natin yung TS, the settling time, and TR, the rise time. Okay? Sige. So, part C na tayo po. Part C. Okay, paano ang solve yung rise time? May formula lang for the rise time. So, TS. So, what's the formula for the rise time? TS. So, Ts is equal to 4 over zeta omega n, right? So, zeta omega n. So, we have 4 up on, anong zeta natin? 0 0.4. And omega n natin is 1.1426. Okay. So, what will be the T sub s? What would be the T sub s? So, we have 4.4 .4 times 1.1426. So, we'll be getting 8.7. 8.752 uh, seconds. So that is the settling time of the system. Okay, and last, no? Okay, we have TR, rise time. So dito natin gagamitin yung angle na sinol po natin kanina. So anong formula ng rise time? N pi minus theta over omega d. Uh, but of course, no? Okay, uh... Yung n natin is 1. Okay? Kasi wala naman naka-indicate na pang ilang beses na rise time yung inahanap. So, we have uh, pi lang. Pi. Okay? Minus yung 1.59. Okay? 595. Ba yun? So, let me verify again. 1.1... Ah, sorry. 1.1595. 1, 1 so, there's actually one here. Yan. Over. Okay. Omega D. What is omega D? So, omega N root of 1 minus theta square. So, we have 1.1426. Okay. And then, square root ng 1.1 1 minus 0 0.4 full square. Alright, okay, guys. So, what will be the value of TR? What will be the value of the rise time? So, we have pi minus 1.1595. Okay, and then we have 1.1426 root of 1 minus 0.4 square. So, we'll be getting 1.893. 1.8927 seconds.
Okay, guys? Alright. Okay. Sige. Okay, no? So, now, no? let's have uh, another problem. Yeah, so, this one, no? Uh, medyo mas mahirap compared dun sa kanina. So, anyway, let's try to answer this one. So, a series RLC circuit with C is equal to 656.93 picofarad is subjected to a unit step input. So, the circuit is observed to exhibit an underdamp response which is measured across the capacitor. With the peak time, Tp equals 13.3452 microsecond and with settling time, Ts equals 29.4304 microsecond. So, determine the values of R in kilo ohms and L in millihenry. Round, oh, round your answer into one decimal place. Alright, guys. Okay. So, in this, uh, the way that I will solve this, guys, I will not derive anymore, no? Uh, the expression for the uh, series RLC circuit. Okay? Kaya alam nyo na yun, guys, no? Yan, kasi ginawa na natin siya, I think, back way back in module 2. Okay? Uh, pero ano ba yun, no? Ano ba yung transfer function natin ng series RLC? So, for a series RLC circuit, actually, you know, so for series RLC, and for series RLC, ano yung VO over VS natin? I mean, VO of S. Yan, over VI of S. So, what is the expression for that? Kung nare-recall nyo pa, guys. So, we have 1 over, okay, LC. Tapos, we have S square plus uh, R over LS plus 1 over LC. Okay? So, that is our expression, guys. No? So, that is our expression for the uh, ano, no? transfer function natin no? for a series RLC circuit. Okay? Now, guys, no, look at this. No? You can actually compare this to a standard second order system. So, any standard second order system natin? Again, there's nothing mentioned about the gain. So, we will just drop K and we will write omega N square. Okay, tas ito ay S square plus uh, 2 zeta omega N S plus omega N square. Okay, guys? Alright. So, we will be using this uh, ano no? uh, transfer functions. Okay. Now, in this problem, uh, we are given with what? We are given with the peak time. Okay? So, peak time. So, from the peak time and, I don't know, settling time. So, from TP and TS. You know, so, uh, ano yung observation na pwede nating makuha? Ano formula ng TP again? So, peak time again. What's the formula that we use for the peak time? So, the formula that we use for the peak time TP is equal sa... Okay, ignoring the n because n is uh, 1, we have pi over omega d. Pi over omega d. Tama? So in other words, no, omega d is nothing but pi over tp. Yan, pi over tp. Tama? Okay. Now, galing sa ts naman on the other hand. So ano yung ts guys? Settling time. So settling time, ang formula ng settling time is okay, 4 upon zeta omega n. But we know, guys, know that zeta omega n is what? That is sigma d. So that is 4 upon sigma d. Okay. So now, guys, no? so we can get sigma d, right? So what is sigma d? And by manipulation, we have 4 over ts. 4 over ts. Okay. So that's it. Okay. Para sa yan, sir, ba't niyo po kinuha? Kasi ganito, no? Uh, if you still remember, no, during the discussion about the pole location, we have derived an interesting uh, result. Ano yung interesting result na yun, sir? Na madalas nakakalimutan ng iba, kaya nahirapan sila na asagutan yung gantong klase ng problem. So, alam natin na also, yan, kung matatandaan nyo guys, no? So, anong formula ng omega n in relation no, to the uh, damping factor and the damp natural frequency? Tama, di ba, na omega n is nothing but the square root of what? We have the omega d whole square plus d sigma d whole square. So, ito yung omega n natin. Naintindihan, guys? Okay. Now, what is omega n square now? So, omega n square, yan is equal to, ano yung omega d natin? Okay, pi over tp. So, we have pi over tp. Okay, whole square. What is sigma d, guys? 
4 over TS. So, 4 over TS whole square. Ayan. So, yan pala yung value ng omega n square. Ngayon, guys, oh, pwede nating ipag-compare, di ba? Magko-compare tayo dito, no? So, di ba, we have 1 over LC here, dito sa side na to. At sa kabilang side ay omega n square. We have the omega n square. Okay? So, by comparing, so, by comparing, pag nag-compare tayo ng coefficients, guys, Okay, so sa kabilang side, we have 1 up on LC. And sa kabilang side is what? Yan. Yung sa kabilang side, guys, what's that? Okay, no? So, omega n square. Yan. But what is omega n square, guys? So, omega n square is quantity. Okay, we have pi up on TP. Okay, square. Okay, plus... 4 over TS whole square. Tama? Oh, eh, L lang yung kailangan natin. So, we can solve for L. Right? And kasi, di ba, may value na ng TP. So, substitute nyo na sa problem. Ito rin, TS. And then, meron din tayong value ng C. Right? So, kayo nang pahala sa calculation, guys. No, So, what would be the value of L? So, the value of L, rounded off to uh, one decimal place, would be 20.6 20 millihenry. Okay? So, kayo na pong bahala doon sa calculation, ha? Yan. Kasi, di ba, may values naman tayo ng uh, C. We also have the value of TP and then TS and then you just solve it, no? Okay. So, makukuha mo is 20.6 milli Henry. Okay, guys? Alright, no? Let me verify if that's correct, no? Mamaya, mali, no? <laughs> okay. Square plus 4 over Y square. Times 656.93 minus 12. Calc. 3452, negative 6. And then we have 29.4304, negative 6. Okay, so tama, tama. Binefer ka lang, no? So we have 20.6 millihenry. Okay, no? So from there, okay, sir, paano naman susolvin yung resistor? Yung resista, resistor? R. So, paano? Okay. Sige. Okay. Uh, yan. From TS. Okay. From TS, guys. So, from TS again, no? So, anong formula ng TS, guys? So, TS is equal to, ano, guys? 4 over sigma D. No? So, uh, in other words, no? Yung sigma D natin is equal sa 4 over TS. Okay? Now, uh, by comparing, ano na may co-compare, sir? Yung gitna naman, guys. So, by comparing, yan. Like, yung nasa gitna nito, di ba, is R over L. And this is 2 zeta omega N. Okay? So, we have R over L. So, R over L is equal sa 2 zeta omega N. But what is zeta omega n? Tama, di ba? This zeta omega n, this is sigma d. This is sigma d. And we know, guys, that sigma d is 4 over ts. So this happens to be, and r over l is equal to 2 times sigma d. What is sigma d? That is 4 upon ts. Okay? And yeah, solve nyo na lang, no? Kasi may value na tayo ng ts. We have the value of l, which is calculated earlier. So, by just simple manipulation or you can just use the solve function of your calculators. So, we can get 5.6 kilo ohms for the value of R. So, okay lang? Yeah, gets naman? Yes, yes. So, yeah. And actually, that's it guys no, for this uh, session. So, thank you everyone. Uh, God bless guys. And yeah. So see you guys no uh, in our next sessions. Bye.